Good, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for for joining us um, on this this first few webinar. Um, really appreciate you taking your time out this afternoon to to join this. Um, just a quick note: it will be recorded for anyone who isn't able to attend today, or if you wanted to come back and skip through. Um, just a quick heads up there. Um, so I'm Chaz. I'm from Net Control. We are a IT integrator in Suffolk. Um, I mostly handle the cybersecurity myself with fire uh, with firewalls and endpoint protection. Um, so today we are going to be speaking about FastView, which is a overlay for for firewalls and how it integrates with the new Kixi regulations, which I'm sure you are all being quite commonly pressed about. Um, so we have got Simon here. Um, we'll be talking about what's changing those regulations, what this means for educators. How to hit the specific Kixi needs with first view um, and at the end there will be a Q&A session as well where if you can um, just let me know I can either raise a question specifically with Simon or we can have uh, sort of unmute you if, if you want to join that um, if there are any other questions in the call please let us know and we can we can answer them as we go um, I'll hand over to Simon who will, uh, who will start the session thanks Jazz hi everybody uh, yep so I'm Simon uh, Simon May I'm uh, the general manager for UK and Europe here at FastView. Um, as Jess just mentioned, the um, kind of the aim of this this session is for me to just to quickly walk through the, what, where the regulations, the Kixi regulations, have changed. Um, which I'm sure most people on this call understand Kixi much more than I do, but I can specialise on the web filtering and monitoring pieces. I will talk about, and then I will talk about how FastView is able to help schools and educators meet those changing requirements. Um, just a bit of background on FastView and a bit of background on me. So FastView has been in this market uh, for about 25 years. We specialise in, in supplying uh, software into schools, which allows schools to understand what their students and staff are doing online, which with the Kixi regulations is now incredibly important. I'll come back to how FastView works, obviously, in a second. Um, but that's who we are. We're in about 600 schools across the UK now and around about 6,000 globally. FastView is originally an Australian company, as a lot of companies are in our sector. Um, and so we'd be, I'd say we've been going for about 25 years. So very well established, um, but very safe, not going anywhere. So that's by way of introduction. So let's get into the, the meat of this. Um, quite a busy slide, so I'll break it right down. So really, so as everybody I'm sure is aware, uh, last September, the Kixi guidelines were updated and the biggest single set of changes were in the web filtering and monitoring piece. And I'll try to kind of distill exactly what those changes mean um, for schools. So fundamentally speaking, prior to the update in September, if you had a firewall, I had the ability to filter and block content, then you then you were compliant. After September, simply having a firewall was no longer enough. You needed to be able to report on what every single staff member and every single student is doing online and has done online. Um, which obviously is a big challenge unless you have the technical skills in order to go and interrogate whatever systems you have in place on site. The other kind of major change, which which doesn't get spoken about as much as the other ones, is the fact that all staff now need to be trained on filtering and monitoring. So you, in effect, you now need to have all staff the ability to run the reports or to create the reports or to get the reports. Each school can interpret that differently as to how they want to take that training, whether it's just a central body that somebody uh, has to contact in order to get the data or whether it's actually the ability to democratise that out amongst all the users. But either way, all staff need to be trained on filtering and monitoring. And also, and this again goes under the radar slightly, uh, is that is that it's kind of there's another set of rules around cybersecurity, which has meant that schools really would need to go back and review their current firewall provision because a lot of the a lot of the tools out there which were particularly focused on education, a lot of those don't actually contain the cybersecurity standards that will keep you compliant um, with those cybersecurity rules. So that's what the legislation means. It means that having a firewall is no longer enough. It means you need to be able to report down to user level. It needs to be able to train all your staff, and it means you need to make sure your firewalls up to the new cybersecurity standards um, that are now uh, governing schools IT. So that's what's changed fundamentally. So what does this mean? It means that schools now need to be able to uh, give non-technically literate staff the ability to analyze and identify safeguarding causes for concern that occur online. That's easier said than done. And obviously I'll show you in a minute how we can help with that. We need to make sure that uh, staff are being made instantly aware of potential online safeguarding issues. Clearly the internet is a very immediate medium when a child is is looking for something, 
then the first port of call is often the internet and their phone or their um their, their their computer and schools now need to be able to be on top of that in real time because kids are working in real time the data that's sent out needs to be in a format that can be understood and that's 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 again seems an easy thing to say but if you look closely at or if you look at what the firewalls will naturally produce by way of data what system they produce very often they're not in a format that's easily understood and uh, and that often makes it very on onerous for non-literate people and non-technically literate people to be able to see the information they need to see and also puts people off and uh, means that they don't actually do what they should be doing you need to be able to go back to an individual this is this is a critical part of the new rules so you need to be able to understand exactly what each individual has been doing online and is doing online um, and that includes guest accounts so people that are sitting in your reception areas and use your network you need to be able to trace to track these people as well anybody that's going through your firewall on your network uh, and finally um, systems need to be secure and gdpr compliant I guess it seems an obvious thing to say but that's not often the case with all of the tools that are out there that work that help schools in this space. So that's that's fundamentally what it means for educators. Um, seems a lot, but in reality, it's, it's actually quite manageable set of changes. So how can fast we help? Um, so we're an online safeguarding tool that gives non-technical people the ability to to understand and analyze very detailed technical data that's produced from the firewalls. So on the right of this screen, you can see the firewalls that we support. So in simple terms, our technology ingests the logs that's created by these firewalls in real time. It then creates a bunch of um, reports and alerts based upon what's going through the firewall in real time. And then it produces those reports um, and sends them out to whoever needs to see them. So that's just a quick, we, we obviously work with the educators around the safeguarding business managers because we also work with the threats, detect, threat detection, et cetera. And the IT team, because we're also able to report on bandwidth um, and firewall performance, which is obviously critical. So I'm now gonna jump into the, into the tool itself. <clears throat> Bear with me 10 seconds while I just do the screenshot change. Here we go, hopefully you can see that. That's a screen that says reporter for Sonic Wall on the top right with a bunch of colored lines and graphs. So the way that um, the FastView works, I'll move that screen, is it's a piece of software which is made available from our from uh, fastview.co, our website. The customers, you can download it, you can evaluate it for free for 30 days. Uh, if you have one of the firewalls we support, you can actually evaluate it alongside that firewall. Uh, you can evaluate it alongside any other tools you might have in place already. Um, and then only then, once you're comfortable that it does what you want it to do, would you would you commit to to implementing it in production? We will work with you throughout the evaluation period to get it configured and set up so it's delivering the reports that you want it to deliver. Because obviously every school is different, and the school is high and and the tool is highly configurable. Um, so it's it's super simple to set up. You can set it up in an afternoon. You can be up and running within minutes. Uh, it takes about twenty minutes on first run for the uh, for the logs to be ingested into the tool, and then you're up up and running. So. I'll just quickly walk through this. Uh, it will make sense uh, very quickly. So this is a typical view that you would see from within a school. I'm not a super user. I'm not got any anything here. This is absolutely as it comes out of the box. You have three and I'm using dummy data. I should mention that this isn't real data. This is dummy data, which again, if you download the evaluation copy, you can use dummy data as well to get your head around it before you, you attach it to anything um, in production. Um, OK, so there's three elements to FastView. There's the uh, the monitoring, which is the overview uh, band with these these tabs here. There's the reporting, which is where I'm going to start in the demo. Then there's the alerting. And the reason I start with the reporting is because when I talk to schools, which I talk to two or three most days, this is the area where they're they're having the most challenge, the biggest challenge, uh, and that we help them the most. So I've opened up the reporting tab and I've gone to user overview report. So I want to get down to a user level, which I talked about in terms of what Kixi. Um, Kicks in our mandates that we have to be able to do. So I'm going to pick a user from the drop down, uh, and this can be set up in a way where different people have access to different users, so it's not uh, not everyone can see it. Uh, and I'm going to run a report on uh, what Roger was up to. I'm not can this. This is so I've gone from the 24th to the 25th. So I'm running a report on Roger's Roger's internet activity on a 24 hour period. I can go down to a 15 minute window. But I've take, chosen a 24 hour period for the sake of the demonstration. Uh, I've run the report as an ad hoc report. I can equally schedule this report. So if I want to send out a daily, weekly or monthly um, report on what Roger's been up to, 
or is up to, then I can schedule that and it goes to whoever it needs to go to via email in, in whatever format. And the reality is most of the uh, most of the interaction with the tool is done via scheduled reports, which are sent out into people's inboxes or alerts, which are obviously the real time reporting on specific actions. So I've run the report. This is the detailed report on everything that Roger's been up to. You can break this report down and configure it if you don't want to see everything. Um, but this will show you the power of what we can pull from the logs if you want to understand what Roger's been up to online. So I quickly scroll through this and it'll all make sense. You can see from this little chart here when Roger was online, you can see the sites which Roger has been attempting to visit. And we have a tool called Site Clean, which removes a lot of the extraneous uh, messy URLs. You get a clean report, which again, on top of everything else everyone's up to, they don't want to have to try and translate these reports from from the messy URLs to the clean ones. So you get a you get a, a clean list of the actual sites that that the user's been on. I keep scrolling through, Roger's been busy. Uh, you can see the categories as defined by the firewall. It's worth mentioning every time a little green arrow pops up as I scroll through, that gives you the ability to, to drill a bit deeper. You can keep drilling until you get to the level of detail that you need. I can see the applications which Roger's been looking at. So this is where something like Chat GPT will turn up if Roger had been using Chat GPT. And then I can see the safeguarding search terms which, which Roger's attempted to search for during this 24 hour period with the keyword groups. So Fastview, we're a member of the Internet Watch Foundation, so our keyword groups contain the Internet Watch Foundation keywords as well as the other ones we've gathered over the years. Uh, and these keywords are totally uh, editable and configurable to meet your own uh, your own requirements. And I'll show you the keywords next before I show you the alerts. So these are all the search times that Roger's been looking at that contain the keywords. And these are all the searches that Roger's been looking at that may or may not contain the keywords. So you might use some of the results here to go back and, and add keywords or reconfigure the searches that you're running. You can also see the YouTube videos that Roger's been on that contain the keywords. And then we go through the individual uh, firewall um, categories, but broken down into Roger's specific activity. So where he's been on sites which are deemed to be unacceptable, but they're still allowed. Um, sites that are blocked and so on. And then down the left, you can jump to each individual section. So you can see there's a huge amount of detail of what Roger's been up to. Um, and if you're doing a retrospective search to understand what he may have been doing on a particular day, because there was something going on on that day, which which indicates that perhaps he was looking at stuff online, which you want to know about. Uh, you can go back as far as you keep the logs. So if you keep the logs for six months, you can go back and run a search six months previously. Most schools have a 90 day retention period. But um, it's up to the school and you can also store the logs offline. And then if you needed to go back to them for an investigation, then as long as you have the logs and you can go back and use Fastly to go and pull data out from from months or years previously if need to. So that's that's how Fastview would help you report on a um, on an individual user level. Like I say, you can run the report as an ad hoc or you can schedule it. Equally, you can run an overview report across the whole school. So I'm going to run an internet usage report now across the school. It's doing its crunching and again, you can schedule this. So maybe a head DSL or a head would want to get a, a mail in their inbox every day of the activity from the previous day. For, for purposes of um, having that information to hand if they need it. So it's now generating a report. Crunching through the data. Right, so very obviously very similar looking, uh, but now we have all the users in the order in which they happen to be in the, in the order of which they're um, bandwidth usage. So the biggest user at the top. And then we have the departments by size. We pull data from Active Directory or Azure Active Directory, if you have that available, which allows us to do the, um, the authentication piece. Then all the sites that's been on across the whole school. And again, you can break down, look at each individual site and see who's been on each individual site um, on, on the uh, using the little green arrow, the categories, applications. Then all the safeguarding search terms which have been used across the school. So you can see the term, you can see the, the group, now with the username against each one and then where they've attempted to search. Obviously this is a demo so it's a limited data set. And again you can see all the search terms by, by going here and you can see exactly who's been searching for what which again you might use to go and train your your um your keywords moving forward. And again YouTube videos but now with the name against each one and then all the individual um 
firewall categories, but now with a name. So you can draw down and see what everybody's been up to. Let me show you what, what else. As you scroll through, who's been online the most time, which sites have been spent the most time on, and so on. So you can run reports on a user basis. We also have a, a safeguarding report now, which is new in this version. If I now run a safeguarding report across this same period of time, what we'll pull out is all the information which is specific for safe, safeguarding. So you're just slicing it in a slightly more focused way to give the safeguarding rated information. And again, every report, any report that you run, you can schedule. So it's, you, and you can schedule as many reports as you need. And again, our, our professional services team will work with you to get those configured as you as you need at the beginning. So if you look at the safeguarding report, you can see that the proportion of the keyword incidents broken down by uh, the keyword groups, broken down by the categories. And again, you can drill through all of these and look at the next level of data. So again, if you looked at now, we break it down into each of the uh, keyword categories, so extremism, et cetera, you can see the top people that have been looking at stuff that sits in the extremism category and what their extremism search terms were. And again, you can run a safeguarding report on an individual level. I've run it across the school for this 24 hour period. The extremism videos have been looked at. Who's been looking at drug related content? OK, no searches there, but there are videos. Self harm. So what you'd expect to see there. Then with the videos, and then add on profanity. All the search terms, no videos this time, but you can see all the, the, the websites they've attempted to search for. We'll get on to alcohol, tobacco, and you can jump through the categories down the left here, cult and occult. So these are the categories as defined by your search engine, which the websites are categorized into. So you can see lots of information. That's the anti-terrorism. So masses of detail here. And you can run this on a daily basis or an hourly basis if you wanted to and see what's going on. And if you want an ad hoc report on, on the day, then you will get what's happened up until that point on the day. So effectively real time. Um, so you can really just dive in and see what's happening at any moment in time. So I've run through uh, the reports, which as I say, is where we see the biggest challenge from schools trying to understand how they can how they can get the data on what their um, staff and students are up to online. Uh, as you can see, super easy. There's also an activity report tab where you can use this to create custom reports uh, with multiple filters so you can get really detailed and really granular if you want to. Uh, and again, any report you run that's like that, you can schedule as well as as well as run as an ad hoc report. So very flexible, very configurable, um, gives you everything you need in order to, in order to meet Kixi. So the next thing I want to show you are the keywords and after that I'll show you the alerts. So if I go into the settings and keywords. A few things to point out here. So the keywords come in these four standard groups. You can add your own keywords to any group or you can create your own keyword group. <clears throat> so what we see in a lot of schools, for instance, is um, schools adding teachers names as a keyword group. So if the kids start to Google where the teachers live then they can they can get ahead of that. Um, but the thing to point out is the exclusions. So um, we try and remove as many false positives as possible, because if you did a, if you just sent an alert against the word assassination, well, you're going to get every kid who's doing a project on JFK or Martin Luther King. Every time they do a search for those guys, you're going to get an alert. So we, we remove that uh, with these excluded keywords. So for instance, 233 Remington uh, is a gun, um, but it's also a place street name. So if a child was to type in how do I buy a 233 Remington? You're going to get the alert. If a child types in, how do I get to 233 Remington Street? You won't get the alert. So you're not going to get inundated with unnecessary alerts because it happens to contain word that in a different context um, is not a good word. So we have literally there are hundreds, thousands of keywords in, in the tool that come in the tool as uh, as it's shipped uh, with whatever you add. Uh, we update them about once a quarter. And they're updated via uh, uh, an update that we that we make available via our website. You download it. 
we have no access to your back end, no access to your data, no access to anything in, in your systems, um, which is what makes our tool uniquely GDPR compliant and super secure, because this is super sensitive data uh, when you're talking about people's internet usage. So the keywords drive the reporting. They also drive um, the alerting. So if I go to uh, the alerts tab, what you'll see is a list of alerts. It's not very elegant looking, but it is a list of alerts. If I go to the settings and alerts tab, you can see how you create an alert. Now, the way the alerts work is um, as the firewall is being used and it's um, producing strings of data. Um, so our technology is reading the strings of data as it comes through. And when there's a one to one match between the alert and the activities come through the firewall, it produces an alert in real time within seconds of the activity happening uh, via an email that goes to however you configure it to be sent. So I'm going to pick out a couple of these alerts just to show you the granularity or the broadness and kind of like that some of the alerts are not quite as 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 uh, obvious as you might think, but they're useful nonetheless. So here's an alert which would uh, send out an email uh, in real time every time uh, a user spent more than an hour in a four hour window on an unproductive but allowed website. So typically a Facebook. You give it a name, unproductive browsing, set a priority medium. There's higher priority ones than that, but you do want to be made aware if kids are spending too much time. And you can obviously set this to be two hours, three hours, four hours, 30 minutes, whatever you want. And that fires out the alert with the evidence that you configure here to whoever you need it to go to here. And these can obviously go to multiple email addresses um, according to what you need it, where you need it to go. You can set up individual alerts for individual groups. So the same alert rather, but depending on who, who's coming in from, it can go to a different person. And again, we'll work with you to get that set up um, during the evaluation period or during production. So that's 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 an example of an alert which is relatively granular. Uh, you can obviously go uh, why every school has fast view has this set. So anytime um, anybody goes to any website that's in the extremism and radicalization category, we'll fire out a high priority alert um, with the name of the website, the URL, and the category it comes from. And you can add multiple strings to the yellow evidence so you can have as much detail or as little detail as you want you could have uh you could have another one which is um anybody who searches for any key, any word that's in the extremism keyword group uh so again every school pretty much has that set up so that's how the alerts work uh the last thing i'm going to show you is um the monitoring piece so if i go to dashboard what this is doing is is it's supplementing what you get from your firewall today because you have most firewalls come with some kind of dashboard capability but that, that dashboard capability is generally around bits and bytes and capacity and throughput and bandwidth and all those very good technical things which the it team needs to make sure is working what we do is we provide an overlay to that which gives you information on what your users are doing in real time so if you take for example bandwidth use what we can see on the left here is the bandwidth use over the last 12 hour period on the right is the past 15 minutes. Productivity, again on the left, it's the last it's the last 12 hour period. On the right, it's past 15 minutes. So where productivity gets useful is if all of a sudden that red line suddenly spiked, then uh, then clearly something's going on out there, which is causing a lot of people to look at unacceptable content that's deemed to be unacceptable, might be worth going to investigate. And of course, you can set up alerts for all of this as well. So you don't need to be sitting and monitoring and watching this. So as you can see, it's moving as the data in, in effect in the demo version is changing in real time. And firewall actions, if you've got a lot, all, all of a sudden a, a lot of blocked content, then uh, that might be worth looking into. So we got to bandwidth. What I, we, I call the bandwidth kind of like your rolling league table. So this is what's going on through your firewall when you're looking at it, so in real time. So these are your top users in real time, top departments and offices, depending on how you've got it set up. Might be year groups, might be subject groups, might be locations. On a multi-location, might be individual schools in a, in a, in a trust environment. Uh, your top sites. So again, this changes in real time. So if all of a sudden a site that you didn't want to be, you were conscious that was not a great site, something was near the top of the list, you might want to go and analyze. And again, everything here is drillable, so you can go through, see what's going on. Categories, downloads, top applications, uh, application categories from the firewall, and application risks. Productivity gives you all the things that you really need from a from a safeguarding perspective. So the real time safeguarding information. So what are my allowed but unacceptable categories that are being accessed? And you can configure this screen with multiple things. Um, allowed but unacceptable sites. 
your top users are act, trying to access stuff that's deemed to be unacceptable from your firewall. And again, all this is drillable, so you might want to see what Kira is up to in real time. Blocked uh, block categories, block sites, blocked users. Uh, so who's accessing the most block sites you want to go and look at, uh, which the most actively search for blocked and unacceptable sites. Unproductive stuff, so things deemed to be unproductive on your firewall. This is a role in real time, so these league tables will constantly change as traffic is being generated. And unproductive um, category sites and users. So a good, you can dip in, uh, customers can dip in and just see what's going on. And if they hear a rumor that something's gone viral, they can jump on here and see if it's reflected in the internet traffic. The final two are firewall. So firewall um, gives the IT team what they need from in terms of which rules are being used, which policies are being acted on actions and um, uh, viruses and, and intrusions and that kind of thing. But again, down to user level, and these are all clickable. So you can drill down all of these. And the final one is, is VPN. So if uh, if you've got people access your network via VPN, then this will capture the information on those guys and girls. Uh, and you can see who the most active users are, who's dropped, who's struggling, who's accessing it at midnight in one school. Uh, can't tell me. Um, and that in a that in a nutshell is fast view. Um, to recap, what where we we add the most value is the ability to really quickly and simply provide real time user level reporting as defined by Kixi. Super simple to use, so you can open this up to anybody, technical and non technical, and they very quickly can run reports. If they run a report and it's not quite the right report, they can go back and run it till they've got it till they've got it right. There's no limit on that. You're not relying on a third party to provide you with reports, so you have complete control of what FastView produces. Um, and so you can run as many reports as you want, set up as many alerts as you want, totally within um, your domain, how you want to have that set up. Super, super simple, super easy, um, and super quick to, to get running. So I've given you a quick overview of the tool and how it hopefully, hopefully you can see how that helps you meet um, your Kixi requirements. Like I say, we're in about 600 schools now. Um, we are onboarding about 20 schools a month at the moment. Uh, who are using FastView to uh, to help them meet Kixi. Let's go back to my deck. Just to finish off, and then if there's any questions, we'll take questions. Um, and just to give you kind of like a real life example of where tools like FastView kind of adds real benefit. This is from a couple of weeks back. We're doing some reference calls with some customers. Uh, quite a large foundation in Cambridge and and a child. Uh, they discovered a child had an eating disorder through the fast few reports, which kind of like made us all feel rather good about what we do on a daily basis, frankly, and um, and made us think that, you know, there's real, real, real value in in what fast few does and how it can make a real difference to people's lives out there. So thank you for your time. Uh, any anything I've missed? Any questions? um please uh please let's raise them now thank you over to you Jazz. yeah thank you very much simon um i hope everyone saw saw the value in that i'm just going to open the q a tab here uh we have got a question simon um from michael looks like a useful product two questions can we set up tiered access levels safeguard having more than normal yep. teacher etc yep. um and for a licensing model we're a medium-sized college using a cyphos utm Yep. with 900 staff and 10,000 in-year students. What kind of costing are we looking yeah. at? So let's pick up. So yes, you can do tiered access, so not everybody gets to see everything. Uh, and again, our professional service team will work with you to get that set up as you want. Um, now, in terms of costings, so the license model is uh, based on user numbers, not, not, not device numbers, which I know some other tools are. So as far as we're concerned, each individual user can have as many devices as they want. Uh, we don't require an agent on the device or anything like that, so it's really simple to make sure you're capturing all the information. Um, you said, and, and, and the license model is not necessarily dependent on how many users you have potentially on your network. So if you've got 500 permanent students and 1,000 visiting students, then we'd license you for the 500. So it's kind of where you've got a big constituents, but a lot of them aren't there every day, we license you on the ones that that you really need to have license for on site. You will still get data on all of the others. In terms of the cost model, I need to understand how many users you have regularly visiting site or on site 
to give you the right cost because otherwise the numbers get huge in some of these bigger schools and um, it becomes uh, not viable. So that's how we license that. So I'm happy to work through the guys at Net Control to get some pricing to you um, so you can assess whether it does what you need it to do. And we always have the evaluation running as well so you can look at that in your own time. Sure. Uh, we've got one here from Ben. It says storing data in another location for long term storage. Is is that in regards to um, regards to sort of ex exporting or? Yeah, so depending on so the so fast sits on a virtual machine, which obviously has a certain capacity. Uh, when you run the evaluation, you can do a calculation of the size of the logs that you're generating or ingesting, plus the reports you're running and the alerts you're running. And it'll give you a view as to what your, if your data retention period is 90 days, it will tell you what size box you need to have it sat on. It's not onerous. Let's say you have a 90 day retention policy, but you don't want to throw the logs away. You just, you siphon them off to cheaper storage somewhere. And in the, and in the odd event, you would know to, need to go back and reanalyze or re, re run reports against older data that you've still got. Then it's just a matter of pointing the fast view server to where you're where you've got them stored it's really it's really simple and again our professional services team are on hand to help with any any requirements like that but yeah so the so you need to make you need to have a vm that contain has enough capacity for what you want to retain but other than that you can store them in a, a third party site and you the vm can be doesn't it can be in the cloud which is expensive but sometimes is what people want to do Okay, perfect. Uh, there's a couple more here have just popped in. Um, we've got what are, what are the challenges you find typically of implementing online safeguarding in schools? Yeah, um, well, there's always budget because there's, there's always the requirement to do more with less. And this is a requirement which is kind of not come out of the blue, but it's it's kind of landed without a lot of here's how you do it. So schools are pretty much left on their own. So it's always budget, which we're always happy to talk about. Uh, and really, it's just the idea that this is actually a non, this is quite a technical thing, right? And uh, yeah. most schools don't have, you know, with respect, most schools don't have the technical skills to get their heads around this on their own. So they rely on the partner community and their, their suppliers to help them get there. But it's, it's a real challenge um, to kind of understand how you're going to do this. And it's, and, and that's where I see you know, when I'm having these conversations with schools, it's like I kind of get it, but I don't really understand it enough to make a conscious decision to help me do this correctly. So I think there's a bit of a, a learning curve to be gone through. Um, and there are there are quite a few tools out there which do what we do in different ways. And it's understanding which what requirements you have around, you know, because some of the guidelines are open to interpretation It's how you want to interpret the guidelines to match your requirements. So, for example, um, monitoring what kids are doing on PCs at home. Some schools decide they want to do that. Um, they don't have to under the regulations. Uh, other schools decide they don't want to do that, but that would drive them down a technology choice, um, which can make sure. things complicated. But um, but yeah. Uh, so a couple more in here. Uh, we got, we were previously looking at FASU, but it wasn't compatible with our WatchGuard deployment. I saw this on the slides. Has this now changed? Yes. As of it actually launches, it's now out there in production, but it launches officially tomorrow morning. So yes, first of May, we have a WatchGuard version. We're working very closely with WatchGuard. Um, yeah, so we do. That's yeah, brilliant. Great question, whoever that was. <laughs> um, and there is just one more. I so say if you pop them in the Q and A, if there are any more, we can grab some. Uh, only one more for now, which is how long and how difficult is implementation of Fast View? Oh well, if you have a, if you have a VM, which most schools have access to in some form or other, and we have a Windows version and a Linux version, so you don't need the expensive Windows license, uh, it can be installed, you know, straight away. It, it's it's I installed it on my laptop to run demos. It took ten minutes. It's it's a simple it's a it's a very simple installation. Um, the the work is in the configuration, having it do what you want it to do, uh, which can take a bit of time, but we were talking hours and days, not months and weeks. Uh, and and our guys will walk you through that and help you with that. But once you've kind of run a couple of alerts and you've got your head around it, happy days. And like I say, if you want a report, it's not quite what you want, then you can run another one until you get it get it how you want, without incurring any extra cost or anything like that. So it can be set up certainly same day. And we have we've had situations where schools have come to us the day before an inspection, uh, in a bit of a panic because they realise they haven't got something and that they have it up and running for the inspection. Okay, perfect. Uh, there is another one here. Is the Linux deployment any faster? 
No, actually, the Linux deployment, no, it's not. It's a bit more complex. I'm not technical enough to understand what the complexities are. But if you go down the Linux route, I, you probably will need one of our guys to kind of help you with that. Uh, it's to do with um, containerization and there's all the other bits and pieces that, that that are in there to make it work on Linux. But it's not it's not any not much slower. But I'm just being honest. It's it's a little bit more complicated. The Windows version is super simple. It's a Windows install. OK, perfect. Uh, are there any more questions? I'll just give it a, another sort of couple of minutes just to see if any more questions pop in there. Uh, oh, there is one more. There is one more. Uh, does it need to do packet inspection on WatchGuard? Yes. Good question. Deep packet inspection. You can get a level of reporting without deep packet inspection switched on. Uh, but to get down to the, the subdomains, etc., you do need deep packet inspection switched on. Now, that is not necessarily an overnight process, as probably sounds like the person who's raised that question is reasonably technical. Um, but it is a process which whichever tool you go with to get to the level of reporting you need, you need deep packet inspection switched on. Right. So it's not a tool that it's not a problem that we create, but yes, you do. Uh, and there is a, there is a standard process for doing that, which will help you with your firewall vendor will help you with in order to, to roll this, the certificates out in a managed fashion so you don't break sites. Um, but yes, you will need deep packet inspection switched on to get the most out of it. OK, perfect. Um, so I think we'll, we'll we'll wrap it up there. Um, Brilliant. If there are any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll put my email in this chat. But for those who are watching, um, sort of post post webinar, it's chaz c h a z dot floyd f l o y d e at net hyphen c t r l dot com. Um, happy to bring Simon along to any demos should you want to sort yeah. of deep dive into this further for you. Um, happy to arrange a call and say if there's any any other additional questions or, or queries, then please reach out to us. But um, other than that. Uh, I'll reach out to everybody with a recording of the webinar so you can all scrub through it at your own leisure. Um, and I just want to thank you all very much for your time and um, have a great yep. rest of your day. Thanks. Thanks for setting up. Thanks, Jazz. Cheers, guys. See you then.